Well, as the sign behind me indicates, we've made it to Alberta, Canada. In this episode, we cross the border into Canada. We visit the trekkiest town ever and get a taste of Calgary. Then the journey along the Canadian Rockies begins. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Good morning, destination Canada. We're gonna cross the border at the Chief Mountain Port of Entry, which is actually inside Glacier Waterton Lakes National Parks. And this is one that was closed for three years during the pandemic. In fact, as of this filming, it just opened back up. It should be a scenic one. We're about to turn left onto State Route 17, the Chief Mountain Highway. the sign Port of Chief Mountain 14 miles. Oh, there it is, Chief Mountain. Very impressive. I was really expecting this stretch of road to be a little more scenic. And it is, don't get me wrong, but perhaps we've been spoiled by everything we've seen so far. Or perhaps we're just nervous about the border crossing. Which, why would we be, right? My only apprehension is that I'm towing an RV that is not registered under my name. It's got a dealer plate, so it still belongs to Winnebago, and I'm concerned they might give me a hard time because of that. But no, here's the summary. All they cared about basically was firearms, alcohol, and pot. And apparently alcohol was okay because, as you can see, they let us through. They did ask us some trick questions like what's inside the RV, how we met, and whether it was our first time going to Alaska. Now, greetings from Alberta, everyone! This should be our third Canadian province, if you count our 2013 Ontario and Quebec road trip from 10 years ago. It's a pivotal moment here in our epic road trip. And look at this scenery all around us. This is amazing. This is the, the chief mountain uh, crossing, uh, border crossing, port of entry. And, uh, that's uh, Waterton National Park, you know, which is part of, it's contiguous to Glacier National Park. Well, we'll continue north. The sun has come out. It is now time to switch Starship to the metric system. And I kind of wish we could just change certain things, like just the speed, perhaps. But GM didn't give us that option. We're leaving Waterton Lakes National Park. And all of a sudden, it is starting to look like Kansas. And when I say Kansas, it could be Nebraska, North Dakota. Pick your Great Plains state. Still, there is something uncanny. Perhaps it is because I know, or the speed limit signs. But you can tell you are no longer in the United States, even though the land and the infrastructure are almost identical but not quite. Maybe it is painted differently, different color palette, different font on the signs, I don't know. Yeah, I think the grain elevators are a little different. Oh, 
moment of truth. It is time for our first interaction of any kind in Canada, besides the border crossing. Let's do our first fill-up. Well, here we are, Petro, Canada, our first fill-up in, in, in Canada. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out liters and kilometers. We're in Vulcan, Canada, by the way. There's something very cool we're gonna see next, uh, right across the street. But first, we're hungry, and we've heard A&W is totally a thing here. We've been keen to try it. Their burgers are named after family members like Grandpa, Mama Burger, so on. Well, we got some poutine and the Uncle Burger. Hmm. Well, that was good. That was, I think that was my first root beer, which hmm, it's an acquired taste, I'm sure. Now let's go across the street. Well, of course, we're in Vulcan, Alberta, Canada. And this town has really embraced the Star Trek reference as being the home planet of the most beloved character, Mr. Spock. What a great publicity stunt the town of Vulcan has made. Uh, I'm sure originally it didn't have anything to do with Mr. Spock, but let's see, let's see what they have. There's the holodeck, which is more like a museum, and this reception area, and of course, there's a gift shop. Very interesting place, we decided not to go into the holodeck. What they have is the memorabilia pictures. They have like a picture of, of Loner Nimoy when he came here, Mr. Spock himself. And this is what looks like a crude representation of a shuttlecraft. Let's go see the Enterprise. There's the starship there. And the flower-looking contraption, maybe solar panels. And the mural with cutouts, so you can take a picture. Okay, let me guess. Mr. Spock, Paul, Janeway. Would that be Scotty? That's Ohura, and uh, of course, uh, that's gonna be Kirk. And that's, of course, Mr. Worf. And that's the Enterprise, the original. Not really, it has a different uh, um, license plate, whatever you call that, um, a tail number. It's not the NCC 1701. What can I say? Live long and prosper. <laughs> let's, let's go, there's a mural, there's a statue of Mr. Spock, and there's a transporter. Let's see if we can see all of them. Of course, all the street lights are like little enterprises. And here on the right, there's a mural depicting all the doctors from the original series until Enterprise, that is. Let's see if we can park and see them up close. Here we are one block away from the mural and the bust of Mr. Spock. Well, yeah, it's one of those downtowns with old diagonal parking, as you can see. So I parked back there one block away. Mr. Spock should be nearby. Well, there he is. Mr. Spock himself. No, wrong hand. No, no, right hand. Live long and prosper. <laughs> here we are. Now, there's supposed to be a transporter somewhere around here, but I can't find it. Well, look what we found. A transporter. Beat me up, Scotty. Which is a phrase that was never said in the series, I don't think. And there's Guinan, Picard. Let's check out the mural across the street. And yeah, let's just check out the mural real quick and then we're going to Calgary. Okay, track stop, doctor's mural. And of course, that will be all the doctors up to this point in the Star Trek series, right? That will be Dr. Flux from Enterprise, McCoy from the original series, of course, uh, Dr. Crusher from TNG, the Doctor from Voyager, and Dr. Bashir from DS9. All right, very cool how the town and the county of Vulcan have uh, embraced the Star Trek motif. I mean, even, even the lamps, even the street lights are like tiny little starships. Kind of reminds me of Roswell, New Mexico, a little bit in that sense. But now uh, you have the Star Trek insignia on the sidewalks and on the crosswalks too. 
Yeah, there are Star Trek references everywhere. This town, definitely worth a quick stop if you are a Star Trek fan. I want to thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. And Magic Spoon is really serial reinvented. So I want to share with you its amazing benefits. They have this childlike nostalgia thing going on, cartoon inspired, never boring, with the tastes that you remember. And you can eat at any time of the day, but with high protein. Only 3 to 5 grams of net carbs and 0 grams of sugar. It is also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, with no artificial colors or sweeteners. Um, did I mention sugar free? Now let's give it the taste test and today I'm going with my favorite, cocoa. Mm, I just love it. Not only the taste, but the smell too. So click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code TRAVELING at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com slash traveling and Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money. No questions asked. So click the link below and use the code TRAVELING for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash traveling to save $5 off your order today. Now back to where we were. Now let's continue towards Calgary. There's a harvest host near downtown. We're going to meet up with some viewers and then we'll try to explore the city a little bit. And if we like what we see, we might come back on the return trip from Alaska. Here we get a glimpse of the Canadian Rockies to the west. Although, I'm sad to say, it is a little smoky from all the wildfires. And there it is, Calgary in the distance. Very good looking skyline. The plan is to stay at a harvest host very close to downtown so we can potentially unhitch or at the very least take an Uber to where we want to go. And uh, here it is, Skunk Works Distillery. But there is only one hiccup in an otherwise well-conceived plan. The distillery doesn't open until later this afternoon and there is no clear RV parking area and they are not answering the phone. So after much deliberation and risking a no-show penalty, we are improvising a plan B. There's a shopping mall south of town that allows overnight parking, so that's where we're going. This is it, the South Center Mall. Ooh, that's one tight turn. I'm glad we're short. Alright, this seems to be the RV section. Well, we ended up at South Center Mall here. They have free uh, RV parking. You just have to register with the client services. It seems pretty nice. We are, we are kind of under the shade of these trees, so it's not gonna, it's, it's hot today. It's unusually hot, but I think we're gonna be fine. We, we, but the point here is, Harvest Hosts, when it works, it's great, but it doesn't always work. And I think that that's something that needs to be pointed out. And in this case, well, you saw that place, it was just a street in a semi-industrial area. And um, and there was no communication, you know, like, and uh, well, we have to arrive after six in, the, in, the, in this case. I don't know. Not what I was expecting. I was I was really looking forward to patronizing the business and getting some moonshine, but sometimes it doesn't work. And if they give me a strike for not showing up, I showed up. <laughs> it's uh, it's all right. Now let's see if we can explore a little bit of Calgary here, because tomorrow we're going to the Canadian Rockies. After an early afternoon meetup with Kiara and her family, we've decided to take an Uber downtown. That way we don't have to deal with traffic, 
parking, all that in a new city. We really don't know what to expect. Ooh, nice architecture. The idea was to go to Calgary Tower first, but I think we're going to see if we can get something to eat instead. Well, they decided to come by downtown and yeah, that little last thing, Calgary Tower. We're gonna walk around a little bit. We don't have a whole lot of time. We have like two hours, two hours of daylight left, but uh, we're gonna make the best of it and maybe get something to eat. Oh, we have some street art here. The tall building is called The Bow and is one of the most iconic here in the city. And here's the light rail transit system called C-Train. This is the heart of downtown. Here, by The Bow, we encounter this peculiar wireframe sculpture of a young girl's head called Wonderland, made by none other than Spanish sculptor Jaume Plenza. It is meant to represent the dreams of the young people of Alberta. We saw a similar style sculpture also made by Plenza at Papa John's Park in Des Moines. Very, very cool. Let's get inside the head. Very impressive sculpture, very impressive building. I really wish we had time to, to explore more, but we'll probably pass through here on the way back from Alaska. So we might allocate a day or two. You know, I didn't think uh, Calgary was gonna be this nice. Stephen Avenue here seems to be happening. Very lively, very lively. I'm trying to think, oh, there's a pub. We have to figure out somewhere to eat. have an old fire engine and as you can see there are just too many choices well, apparently it is patio season everybody is out and about enjoying the great weather We ended up at this place called the Social. Good barbecue. And brisket. Well, that was pretty good barbecue. We ordered way too much food, but great ambience. Great, great, great people watching here on this street, uh, on Stephen Avenue, here in Calgary. Now we're gonna get an Uber back to the RV. Here's our ride. Well, this was certainly just a taste of what Calgary has to offer. A taste. An appetizer that left us with a desire to try the entree. What a great, vibrant and diverse city. At least what we saw. Our first day in Canada is coming to a close. It's been a, it's been a good day, but I'm tired. We're, we're tired. I mean, it's a, first, a, even though the, the border crossing was virtually uneventful and very easy, it's still stressful. You know, you still get a little nervous. You know, you don't know what they're gonna ask you for and whatnot, or if they're gonna take your wine. <laughs> um, 
Then we went to uh, visit a, a, a very special uh, viewer here in Calgary. And then we went, uh, you know, downtown, which was, a, I, 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 I'm so pleasantly surprised by, by Calgary. Uh, yeah, a vibrant, vibrant, super diverse uh, city. Now this is gonna be home for the night and tomorrow, tomorrow the journey continues towards Banff, Lake Louise, Jasper, Grand Prairie, Dawson Creek, and the rest is Alaska Highway history. Let's get a good night's sleep and tomorrow the journey continues going north. The journey to Alaska. Reheating leftovers. Well, this ended up being very convenient. So thank you South Center Mall here for, for letting RVers spend the night. Now we're gonna go to Safeway, which is right there next door to get some groceries because as we go north, it's gonna start getting more and more remote and, and I'm sure the Calgary Safeway here has everything. <laughs> so let's do that. Today we're going to Banff National Park, but first, let's drive by downtown with a trailer in tow, because that's how we do it. Trust me, there's a method to our madness. We do have a plan. Here we are, descending onto downtown Calgary once again. We're just crossing through though. Our next point of interest is actually on the other side of the Bow River. So many parts of downtown and the city in general that we didn't get to explore. Let me tell you, we must return for sure. Now passing by Olympic Plaza. According to what I read, in winter they converted into an ice skating rink. It is not often that we get to drive in a big city, and we've been in nature for a couple of weeks now, so it is a welcome change. If only for a little bit. In fact, I'm already itching to get to the mountains. But first, we're going to that spot I mentioned, where supposedly you get a great panoramic view of the Calgary skyline. Here on the left, we have an old clock tower, dwarfed by all the skyscrapers surrounding it. Behind it, Harmony Park, and this must be Chinatown. Oh yeah, this is gonna be great! Well, I was able to park right here for a few minutes because, man, the things that I do to get the shot. This is uh, Crescent Hikes, Heights, I believe. And this is one of the spots where you get some of the best views of downtown Calgary behind us here. It's a lovely city. We shall return soon.
I kind of like the look of all these rather modest residences. Well, timing is everything, right? And turns out today is very smoky. We have uh, some some fires. We should be seeing mountains in front of us. They're not there. We start seeing some foothills through the haze, but not the towering peaks I was expecting. As we get closer, visibility starts getting a little better, so there's hope. Besides, we're not really gonna do anything until tomorrow. In this area, you'll notice the road is fenced off to prevent wildlife from running into traffic. And they have these cool-looking overpasses for wildlife to cross. Here, we're approaching one of those under construction. Now, we're approaching the Lac de Arcs viewpoint, so let's take a quick break. So smoky. We are entering Banff National Park, and Parks Canada charges by the day and by the person, so 10.50 per day per person is going to be 42 for us. Or we could get a discovery pass, which is 72.25 for the whole year, but since this is probably the only park we're going to visit, we'll stick with the daily fee. Here's the exit to the town of Banff, which we'll visit tomorrow. Here we have one of those wildlife overpasses. We're going to be staying at Lake Louise Hard Sided Campground, and tomorrow we'll explore the area. But that will be on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road.
Riding in my RV 